Hello everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of Pulp Crazy. I'm your host, Jason Aiken. This week's episode was inspired by my talk with John Mark Lefissier of Black Coat Press last week. During John Mark's discussion of French cinema, he mentioned Brotherhood of the Wolf, or Le Pacte des Loups. This is one of my favorite cult movies, so I thought I would rewatch it and do an episode on it. I wouldn't call it a pulp movie, but it certainly would be at home in Weird Tales magazine, and the lead characters could even have their own series in Adventure magazine. Brotherhood of the Wolf is a historical horror action film directed by Christoph Gans, based around the Beast of Gévaudan. It was released in January 2001 in France and came out here in the United States in September 2001. Brotherhood of the Wolf is told through a flashback by the aged Marquis d'Apture. It is the time of the French Revolution, and people are gathering around his residence to put him to the guillotine. Before he goes outside and is murdered, though, he wants to get the true story behind the Beast of Gévaudan down on paper. Thus, the two scenes with the aged Marquis act as a framing sequence for the film, with the main story being told as a flashback in between them. The story begins in 1764 with the Beast of Gévaudan terrorizing the countryside and murdering women. King Louis XV has sent soldiers to Gévaudan to kill the Beast, but they're not having any luck. The soldiers have killed a lot of wolves, but besides that, their major accomplishments have been acting like thugs towards the local populace. The king sends his royal taxidermist and knight, Gregor de Fronsoc, played wonderfully by Samuel Lee Bion, to investigate and identify the beast. De Fronsoc is a well-traveled guy. He's been to the Americas. Uh, he's a naturalist. He's a soldier. And he's also a very talented artist. Accompanying him is his Iroquois friend, Manny, who is of the Mohawk tribe. Manny is his best friend and his blood brother. Manny is played by Mark Deskoskis, and Deskoskis' martial arts abilities are utilized in the film. When the two reach the region of Gévaudan, they meet and befriend the young Marquis d'Apture and begin to investigate the beast. Now, this is a great movie, and it's a cult classic in my opinion, but it does have a couple of flaws. For one thing, the regular runtime is 2 hours and 22 minutes. There's a portion of the movie that just feels like it could have been tightened up a little bit, and this mainly deals with the human aspect, in relation to the beast. I don't want to say any more, as I don't want to spoil too much. I heard there's a director's cut of the movie that has an additional 10 minutes or so of footage. It isn't on the DVD that I own, but I would be curious to see what scenes were inserted into the movie, and if those additional 10 minutes are beneficial or cause the movie to slow down. But overall, I think the story is actually pretty good. But once the human element gets introduced and begins to be investigated, I think it just took a little bit for the movie to get going again. One aspect of the movie I really enjoyed are the action sequences. Although they may feel a little bit out of place for a historical drama like this, um, the martial arts used by Mani do not feel that far out of place, I don't think. To some people, though, they might who are hardcore historical uh, or historians and are big on historical accuracy, though. But Monty has a few fight scenes with gypsies who also use a more contemporary martial arts style. 
Um, I really enjoyed these two scenes where he does this, and there's a couple other scenes where he uses his tomahawk, which I found to be quite good as well. In a way, Moni is represented as the Kato to Defronzok's Green Hornet. The fight choreography for Brotherhood of the Wolf was done by Philip Kwok, who's a Hong Kong cinema legend. I'm a big fan of his from Hard Boiled, in which he was both the action director and he had a role as well. I think the actors in this movie were all very good and really played their parts well. Monica Belushi has a small but influential part in the film, and her husband Vincent Cassell is great in his role as the antagonistic noble whose sister De Franzok is pursuing. Samuel Lee Behan does a great job as the leading man. His scenes with Mark Deskoskis as Manny and Emily Dequan, who plays De Franzok's love interest, Marianne, are all very well done. I think Deskoskis did a great job playing the silent and stoic Manny. I especially enjoyed the scenes with him and a wife wo and a white wolf he seems to bond with. If you're in the mood for a cult movie that you might have missed out on, with some great action scenes and an interesting premise, give Brotherhood of the Wolf a watch. I tried looking for it on Amazon, but it seems to be out of print. Your best bet is your local video store, if those still exist in your neck of the woods. Or maybe Netflix will have it for you to rent on DVD. It's definitely worth a watch and a rent. I think Christoph Gans did a great job on this movie, and I hope he's able to do some French pulp character films in the future. I think he'd do a great job on them. I'm tinkering with the idea of doing a stretch of episodes here devoted to pulp-inspired movies. This would include The Shadow, Sky Captain in the World of Tomorrow, The Rocketeer, and The Phantom. So maybe look for those episodes in the future. Well, that's it for this week's episode. Pulp Crazy is located at pulpcrazy.com. I'm at pulpcrazy on Twitter and facebook.com slash pulpcrazy. My YouTube channel is located at youtube.com slash pulpcast. You can also email me at pulpcrazy at gmail.com. Please like, subscribe, or follow if you're enjoying the episodes or drop me a line. I always appreciate hearing some feedback. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.